Uh oh, tap in. Willie Mo Jr. here. Bro, everybody been on my phone, just call, where my phone go? Calling me, telling me about what done happened with Nelly last night. You know they like, Willie, tap in and tell them when Nelly had hated on you. I might do it right after this, though. Although years had passed, I would often think about my biological mother. How did you think that being adopted and never having met your biological parents that you was okay? Like, what did she look like? What was her name? Did she ever think of me? I opened the birth certificate, and I, you know, I, I get it, and I look at the name for the child, and I realize that I did not have a name. Although she had refused to meet me, I wondered those things. Your grandmama's dead, but your mama's not dead. Flat out. So last night, evidently, Nelly went on like this little podcast in St. Louis, telling all the little St. Lunatic business. My phone ringing about 11 o'clock. I'm talking about ring, ring. I'm gonna keep it a buck with you. I be sleep by like 10.50 right at 11 o'clock, but I kept hearing them rings. And once I found out what they was ringing my phone for, I woke up to be nosy. Flat out. After hearing that thing Nelly had said, I started to think about my days is pretty well. You gotta realize, like, I'm the second dude out of St. Louis who about to blow up. But I ended up signing with D2, the same label Nelly was talking about. And it's like it just didn't work out. Nelly sold, like, 30 million records. I sold, like, 30 of them. Total. I ended up going independent, learning the business, came out with a song called Lay Your Body Down, and the rest is, uh, history. Still on the masters to Lay Your Body Down in four walls, too, since Nelly was talking about the business, he was right about that. Anyway, so the truth is, I had never met Nelly until we got grown. I had only ever had dialogue with Ali. Murphy Lee had a whole lot of heart. He hopped out the truck one night, like what's happening? And Kiwan just a good guy. Kiwan clearly told everybody on TV that he was Tito of the Jackson 5. Can't be mad at Tito. I'm just saying. Anyway, as far as Nelly ever hating on me, I never really paid attention to it. When I come back to St. Louis, people always bring it up. Yeah, man, that nigga Nelly was hating on you, boy, when you was pretty willy. But I thank God for my daddy for teaching me that life is not happening to me. It's actually happening for me. So the truth is, when I think about the St. Lunatic, at least we know it ain't gonna be no St. Lunatic reunion and y'all ain't gonna hit that down, down baby together no more. But here's a great opportunity for the Lunatics and you to press of hard reset and start moving into your purpose. You know, reason why I never really focused on hate is because I was locked into my purpose. And right now, I believe that's what the St. Lunatics are gonna have to do now that they'll be navigating life without Nelly as a pivotal part in their life. Truth is, it's gonna be hard, okay? But the one thing I understand about my creator is that he made us creative. And so my prayer is that no hurt, harm, or danger comes to either party and that Murphy, Lee, Kiwan, and Ali, and even Slowdown can be extremely creative on the next moves that they Made. Wait, you know what I seen last night um, was really disappointing though, and uh, I'll just be honest with you. Um, and this is from this is for my friends in St. Louis right now. Um, like our city is in such a, a fragile state that I didn't think any more negativity could come to it. I come there dang near like every other week, but I just feel like our city is really really fragile. And so, if you are excited and happy about some of the legends of our cities city going back and forth it's something really wrong with you right you know i believe that honor can never be broken down and so i don't think that's something um the lunatic business needed to be all out in the open like that like their icons and icons need to handle that behind closed doors um that's just my thought process but um uh, you know i'm definitely gonna be praying for the brothers and um you know just share my heart share my love like you guys are icons to all of us and I know sometimes when, you, when you're when you in your own skin, you don't get the opportunity to know how many people feel and care about you. But I think um, you guys should know that we care about y'all, man. And we just want to make sure that, you know, our icons who are going to be on the same, uh, you know, when we dead and gone, y'all going to be on the same, on the same chalkboard as Red Fox, Chuck Berry, uh, Pujols, Nelly and the St. Lunatics. And so when you think of the broader scope of things, I would hate that the legacy would be diminished over a misunderstanding. And uh, so the truth is, you know, I'm just a vision caster as a leader. You know, I feel like you can get over this hump. A nice movie could come out of this thing. A good reunion can come out of this thing. Everybody can eat, go to the bank. In the meantime, everybody should just be creative. So 
Um, I know y'all probably thought, you know, as Pretty Willie, knowing the record that I've had in St. Louis and some of the stuff that allegedly has happened in my own personal career. I mean, I ain't got none of that, man. I was just really disappointed that our icons would be going back and forth in public. Yeah. And so it was really disheartening and very, very disappointing. And so, you know, my prayers that I can go back, um, maybe not back to normal, but, but who wants to go to normal? Let's move into purpose. All right. So bow, bow. Oh, you already know it. You already know it. Get your tickets to my film. You seen the trailer. <laughs> you know I'm selling. I'm still going to sell some and get your repent sweatshirt. That's all we need to do is repent. Yeah. I love y'all. Willie Mo Jr. Pretty Willie. Lay your body down. I've been, I've been trying to find somewhere to do that, that little hip roll thing I learned back in the Pretty Willie day.